ist Serene Kurka and I welcome you cordially to my podcast Neue Musik leben. I have studied classical singing and I also sing classical music, but I also sing lots of contemporary and experimental music. And if you would like to know more about me, please look at my website www.irenekurka.de. I put this into the show notes for you. Well, as some of you know, this is actually a German podcast, but now I really do on a regular basis, once a month, an English episode because, um, yeah, you ask for it in a way. And I'm also very happy and proud that this podcast is now really listened, yeah, worldwide, you say. Um, you could also subscribe for my monthly newsletter on my website. And in this podcast, I talk with you about themes all around contemporary and new music. I share with you the insights, the behind the scene. And what is most important to me, I really want to bring you the human beings who are somewhat related to the new music world closer. I thank you for listening to this podcast. I know we are now really connected worldwide, as I said before, because this podcast shows up in charts in, well, countries that are far away from Germany. Um, I'm cooperating with the NMZ Neumusikzeitung. In today's episode, I talk with the composer and professor for composition, Frédéric Durieux. He lives in Paris and I think he gives us a great insight about the music life in France and in Paris. This is the interview with Frédéric Durieux. Hello, Frédéric, Frédéric Hello. Durieux. I really welcome you today into my podcast, Neue Musik Leben. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> and it's um, so cool that nowadays with the modern technology, we can talk here in Paris. I'm in Dusseldorf. Yeah. And I would like to know from you, how did you find your way into new and experimental music? Oh, it's a long uh, travel now because I'm 65. <laughs> I think that uh, music was absolutely important for me since a long time. Uh, and without, uh, maybe, I don't want to, to be too much romantic, but uh, if I I had, I don't have new music in my childhood, it would be so, so much terrible for me. But uh, so I, I played the piano, uh, I began when I was five. Uh, and a very fast, the question for me was to... Not only to play the instruments, but uh, to know because, yes, I play the instrument more or less well. Uh, but I was in a family without uh, a culture of the music, in fact. And um, it was like that because uh, maybe uh, the financial situation of my father and mother was better at this time. Um, and they thought it could, could be interesting. And they remarked early that I was very interested by the, the sound of the music on the radio. Sometimes they heard the, uh, the classical program, France Music, and uh, they remember that uh, it was, um, you know, when you begin a, um, a broadcast, you have a little music at the beginning, and uh, one of them in this, on Sunday was a piece, an extract. Yes, uh, an excerpt from uh, music for string uh, percussion celesta by Bartok, and immediately I arrived to hear that, and I jumped a little because I was so happy to hear that. Uh, and I remember well now I know this moment in the score, a rhythmical moment. Uh, and so it was uh, the beginning, and the, the the remark that I was always interested, and I tried to sing what I heard, and so on. And so I began the piano, and very fast. But for me, it was very clear that I wanted to to know how the music is made, not only to play, but uh, what's happened. And I, we had some disc, so naturally in this time, uh, they heard more uh, songs or popular music. And I had uh, I have a brother and a sister 
more old than I, uh, 14 years with my sisters and 11, 12 years with my brother. And they heard more uh, pop music and something like that. But uh, the classical, there was, there was some record of classical music. And I was interested by some of them. For example, I remember that I was abs a great fascination very early with Debussy. Uh, some moments of uh, more the orchestral moment, but uh, Tristan and Isolde. Uh, and uh, for, with the BC, it was very funny for me because I followed the music and I was more or less lost, but it was a pleasure to be lost, to not just understand so much of things better than in a song, and it was too much clear for me. And uh, the question I saw in different pieces with uh, Beethoven, naturally, and Schumann, and, and so. Uh, and I, I wanted very early to know how can we do the, the music? And I, I searched when I was young uh, to find the chords, uh, to find again the melody I could hear on, on the, the piano. Uh, so I think that I was immediately in a process in which I wanted to, to know how the music is made. So that's the first point. At the same time, my family remarked that I, I was the only one. Uh, I was immediately interested of the modern expression in arts, but it could be a modern building, the modern uh, pictures, uh, the modern art was very interesting for me, very early. And so I, I had very fast a, a connection with the most contemporary things in art I could have found. And uh, so it was a long process. And um, when I was uh, 16, 17, quasi, I heard uh, because we we were in, when I was very young we were in Paris and after we go to Grenoble, a city in the Alpes, because my my father came from this place, and they wanted to go back in the Alps, and so he chose uh, Grenoble because it was more a bigger city than his own when he, where he was born and uh, Chambéry, and Grenoble was a university and they hope for me. Uh, normal study, but <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. And uh, so uh, in Grenoble, it was a concert conducted by Pierre Boulez, something absolutely, completely incredible because uh, it wasn't quasi, not concert really of classical music in Grenoble, quasi no. And one day Boulez arrived uh, with, uh, with some uh, musician of the BBC Symphony Orchestra, something absolutely I don't find the, the good word in English, but uh, absolutely uh, incredible. And so uh, my father told me that there is a concert we could go. And so I, I was not so happy to go in this concert, but I, I were. And for me, it was suddenly like uh, the revelation, <laughs> I could say, uh, to find the, the music I wanted to hear. So it was some a piece by uh, Webern, Concert Opus 24, uh, Les Oiseaux Exotiques by Messian. Uh, it was another uh, Varese. Uh, it was, I don't remember exactly which one. It was Octobre, or uh, I think it was Octobre. And uh, Eclat by Boulez. And so it was for me, uh, okay, I say it, it will be there. There, I it's interesting I that you to went to Grenoble to hear Boulez and not every <laughs> Yes, I mean, it's completely... Your yeah. parents did a good job. <laughs> it, it was abs I, I spoke with Boulez one day about that. It was completely incredible to... to... Okay, but it was uh, the manager of the Maison de la Culture uh, who decided that. And uh, this woman was, uh, after several years, uh, Minister of the Culture. And so, but it, yes, it's a very curious uh, thing. And this is when you when you heard this concert. This is also when then you start composing yourself and not just Alors, figuring out how, how it was no, no, done, but also Alors, say I now compose. No, 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 no. I I, I composed uh, more or less. I think uh, less than more. Uh, I composed always. Uh, okay. Sometimes it was uh, maybe songs. It was some some things a little more complex. Um, in a moment, I I played a little. Um, not rock music, but something between progressive and uh, jazz rock music with some friend. And very fast, I composed for the others the new uh, pieces we, we could play. And you after... obviously were very curious to figure out how the other composers 
composed because you always say, I wanted to find out how it works and then it influenced your composing or? Yes, naturally. It was a natural influence. It is absolutely necessary. I think it's a, to think that we could compose without connection with anything uh, it seems to be a little stupid. We have always some model at the beginning. It was the same, mm -hmm. for I think, for every composer in life. Bach certainly composed in what, I, what he heard uh, and he found more of a, I don't want to compare me with Bach. Yeah. But it... You mentioned some German composers and I mean, we have a big tradition but you also have a big tradition with Debussy, Ravel and so on. Yes, but uh, the French the French tradition is not so big. Yeah? If you okay. examine, if you analyze the a long period uh, because uh, the history of France uh, don't help the em emulation, we could say emulation, we could understand the, the some challenge between because in France since a long long time we maybe people doesn't know that some people doesn't know that France could disappear in a moment at the beginning of the 15th century. The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the kingdom was very reduced around Paris and the north of the La Loire, the, the, the river, and um, the situation changed completely after Jean Jane of Arc. That's why Jane of Arc is very important in the imaginary uh, of the French uh, people. It was not only her, uh, this woman, but it was she was the symbol. She is the symbol of the suddenly the the reconstruction of the of the French people of the French kingdom at the beginning. And so after uh, after this moment, uh, the the kingdom, the power was very centralized in the the power need to to control absolutely mm. the country and very fast in less than a century the french kingdom was one of the most uh, important con uh, kingdom in europe with a lot of person uh, and uh, so but in the same times uh, the kings uh, wanted to control everything and the power was always around the, the kings very often around Paris, uh, Paris, and uh, at the end it was uh, one, two, three, four, five composer important, but no one after, no one in Lyon, but just a little, no one in a different city in Bordeaux and so on, and there was not this uh, challenging situation between different cities. It is absolutely not your history in uh, Germany with uh, mm. different little kingdoms in. Uh, who need to 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 uh, to to be better than the other. So you have an opera. I want an opera. You have a university. I want a and so and so on. And that's why you have this very uh, situation that it is more or less always the same. Paris is sixty uh, percent, maybe seventy percent of the different powerness in France. Not only in music, but in research uh, and so. It's getting better, but very, 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 very slowly. And I think. Because this situation, it was clear that it was more difficult to have a long tradition of different composers. And from our generation, yes, we have uh, we have Debussy and Ravel. We could say that we have Berlioz in other way. Uh, so uh, certainly um, the French Monsieur. music, <laughs> yes, Messiaen above, yes, uh, for for me, when I was uh, I decided to be a composer, a serious composer, we could say, of <laughs> a composer who want to know uh, the to learn the notation, the harmony, the counterpoint, the fugue, and so on. Because that's why absolutely my breaking point when I was 16, 17, I say I want to be composer in this way, and I want to be to study um, the harmony, counterpoint, and so on. I stop uh, all the other things, but so. But to go back for the French situation. Um, the the foundation uh, of the Conservatoire de Paris changed a lot of things, and after the beginning uh, around Berlioz, in fact, but the, the Conservatoire began began in uh, 1795, uh, but it was uh, not so bad uh, school of music uh, at the beginning in 20 uh, no 19. Uh, 20, 25, uh, and so on. And so Berlioz was an example of maybe 
one of the composer um, not so bad uh, a composer who can study not so bad the music the composition and so it's it was getting i think it is getting better and better after the, this moment and in the middle of the 19th century yes we we began to have more composer interesting certainly but for my generation it was important to know that the, the yes certainly a big part and we could say sometimes the most important part of the classical music was uh, the the german music in italy too uh, and so on but uh, germany was very important and uh, so that's why um naturally we have uh, a way to learn the music which is very french i remark that uh, for example messian and the french studying in the conservatoire of this person don't really understand so well the the, the tonal music i think the analyses made by messian are not so tonal for example and that's why they don't understand what's happened after i think i'm well i'm teaching since a long time and i think that we we miss different things in the education of this of the more classical and romantic period but okay. so you always look outside a lot and you look what yeah. is happening in the german speaking countries yeah. and um and would you say it's still i mean paris is still the center in france so it's still like also the center of music and contemporary music or how would you say it is nowadays but in france yes it is a very important very important Yes, uh, the, we have uh, two, three uh, per our house. Uh, we have uh, ten ensemble for uh, contemporary music. Uh, we have uh, five orchestras and so on. Yet uh, there is more, sometimes too much in Paris because uh, now there is some problem. Uh, I think. Well, we could speak if we could speak if you want about the classical music, but I think that in we are in a curious period in which uh, the classical music is completely closed in a in a short period. A century and twenty years, maybe yes. If we are optimist, we could say uh, one century and enough. But the, the the music before Bach is completely unknown and sometimes very bad played. I think it's it's not a good idea to play a Beethoven uh, with sixty uh, or seventy musicians. Completely crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's a composed for an orchestra of fifty person, and it's enough. Is there still music then from the older times that uh, people can discover? Or, or uh, I think that and... they can discover better this period, for example, with Mozart, Hein, Beethoven, and until uh, until uh, Schumann. I, when I heard uh, Schumann symphony played with the uh, chamber orchestra, we have uh, in Paris a good uh, chamber orchestra, an Orchestre de Chambre de Paris. And naturally, they don't have the the, the trombone, but they, they have to have the trombone uh, to come. And so they play this symphony with 50, 50, 53 musicians, and it's enough. Uh, mm -hmm. Schumann, Schumann is absolutely not Wagner. Uh, it is the same period, the same culture, but the project is absolutely not the same. And mm -hmm. so we need to, to have for every period, for every kind of writing, music, uh, the the musician we need and I sometimes I ask myself about a large orchestra for my music. I don't have a lot of. But I'm I'm, I'm sure you also have now. I mean, here we have this development that you have the uh, the musicians become more specialized now. They also can whatever study more whatever contemporary playing if they want to, or they do the classical stuff or the more his historic old music style. I'm sure you have the same also in France. Yes, we have, but um, it's a fighting. It's a, we we need absolutely to fight always, because uh, the ancient music uh, there is not a lot of groups, and it is very difficult for them. Wow. And uh, now uh, we are in a period more and more conservative in France. I I regret, but it's so. And um, some people said, but uh, contemporary music is finished. It is finished. We need to have music with. Uh, pictures or with a film or with uh, but for the country uh, the classical music must absolutely don't change we we have the same uh, more or less the same program in fact eh? the same uh, the same person who play uh, in europe um, not on not only in french 
and uh, we have always this the first piece in the concert and after a concerto and after we have a more big symphony and we don't move anything and we the musicians don't play the more modern music it's uh, very curious but we we lost some time uh, pieces composed in the 20s the 30s in the uh, of the uh, 20th century for example the music uh, the music for um, strings uh, percussion and celesta by uh, by bartok is not i never hear it but i don't hear it uh, since a long time in paris mm. really really actually i actually wanted to say something about this piece but this is now a funny side note because i also know your <laughs> now your facebook account and you have beautiful black cats they're uh, yes very gorgeous <laughs> yes. and the The thing is, and this is a funny story, um, I grew also up with a cat who, um, for me, looked like a conductor because how his the white and the gray was on his body. And I always thought he was very musical. And I had back then tapes. Um, my parents gave it to me and uh, whatever, I got Tchaikovsky, hmm? Swan Lake or, or Brahms piano concerto or something and he always came when I put in the tape in my my little room the cat came and he was sleeping while I was listening to classical music <laughs> or sometimes I I made the observations that he would like I don't know lick his fur in the in the in the rhythm and then I also got the tape with this piece you just mentioned the bar talk and whenever I put this tape in he was gone He did not like it okay. at all. <laughs> yes, uh, it depends on uh, every cat. Uh, the, the, the two cats we have now uh, don't like some too much when my son, for example, plays a cello. We prefer to, to, to go out. The vibration seems not so well. But the ancient was better. With this. She could uh, sleep when my, my son played the cello. Yeah. So it depends oh, nice. on every cat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cats are also different. They have their own personalities. Um, I mean, you work with so many um, musicians. What are the qualities you most appreciate in the performers you work with? Big question. The The question is, they want or they don't want to play this music, for example. Sometimes you have you can ask yourself, well, I have this morning uh, a good week or so with Ensemble Intercontemporain. Uh, it was uh, interesting, uh, but uh, and uh, in Salzburg we I work with the um, Österreich uh, New Music uh, Neue Musik Ensemble. Uh, they wanted really to play, and in Chicago I found some marvelous musicians. And so, when the people want to to seems to be happy to to play this music, it's uh, absolutely different. And I think that maybe it's more easy with with the group is not so big. Because more bigger is a group, more you could have some person who, who doesn't like to play this music. It's very difficult. Um, so the, the quality uh, is this one for the musician. After, for the conductor, uh, I hope they, have, uh, they could have uh, some imagination and to be able... I'm very surprised sometimes. When I must explain different things, uh, we, we yes, we 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 write uh, very precise, and my I I think that my score is very 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 precise. Sometimes some people reproach me that to be too much uh, a lot of things, but um, but some of them uh, they they don't read, they don't or they don't read the score. You cannot write everything. To be able to have a, a, a kind of rubato to to stop and to put a, not always to to make a copy taste between different bars and so on. Then the music must uh, breathe with uh, the conductor and with the musician. And um, so when it is like that, I'm completely surprised. Uh, I had this problem one or two times with uh, some uh, conductors who um, played the repertoire. And uh, they they think that uh, when they are in front of a contemporary piece, uh, they must absolutely follow what it is written without uh, any uh, interpretation, any uh, investigation inside the text. And so I say, I'm so sorry, you make the same thing like in another piece. It's not complete, so different. The sounds are different. The language is different. 
um, the, we are absolutely not in the same uh, space of hearing music, naturally. I think that uh, it's very hard for a lot of people to understand, for example, the, the change we have at the beginning of the 20th century, in which uh, the the power of the pitch are the pitches are not so important. Uh, the, the the there is not only the pitch with the frequencies, but there is some sounds quasi pitch or absolutely not pitched, and um, yes, uh, the the space in which we are composing is more large. Uh, because the the power just for the, the for the pitches is not so big than before, but uh, yes, and I sometimes I'm afraid because the, it seems that the, not a lot of people analyzed what happened since a long time, and for me a long time is from the Middle Age. So if mm -hmm. you don't see the, this evolution, uh, well, there is some wave, there's some movement, there is a big change because. Uh, after the modal music, when we are going to the tonal music, but the end of the tonal music. And so uh, a lot of concepts, very confused. When I had some people who told me that Steve Reich is a tonal composer, I want to jump uh, out the window because, uh, please, it's not because it is consonant that it is tonal. It's a confusion. Mm -hmm. And after, they don't understand what's happened. And so that it's more uh, sad for me that, that not to be able to, to, to hear different period in the music and to 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 stay in a very comfortable situation with the genius the masterworks but very often this kind of person don't have a, a lot of imagination when they when they play the music too and, uh, it's interesting because i i often say and i know that from a lot of musicians and interpre interpreters that i when I, when you know when i learn Piece, contemporary music and it is complex and I like it when I get to the point that I can leave like the part where I'm just like organizing it or trying whatever to sing the right pitches at the right time but I want to move forward because I really want to make music and get a buff and and that's the part where where I really enjoy it because then it's it's really music and not just reproducing something or, or mm. you know I'm not a machine. <laughs> Absolutely, no one is a machine. Alors, naturally, if you if you if a composer is too much inside the concept, without uh, without we we have this sensation sometimes to have a score in which the body of the composer was absolutely forbidden. Mm -hmm. Because music is made by uh, rhythm, by breath, by uh, different kind of expression and when you compose your body compose too and if you are too much in a abstract situation i think that yes sometimes this music is absolutely uh, without uh, reality for a musician who want to play and to sing and um, on stage uh, the 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 instrumentalist is absolutely not an engine we have no. some we have that sometimes with a uh, young composer and I said they, they have sometimes the like a simpler mind of composing. They know, for example, that something very simple, uh, a Pitts Bartok. Yes, we can do a Pitts Bartok. Block. Okay. And after we could play a jeté. Okay. And so they compose clack. Yes, but hello, there is someone who play. You need to do that to clack to take again and to put your, your bow and Give yeah. time to the body. It's not a song on which you play on the keyboard like that. It's a human who will play. And this is more interesting because it is a human. Okay. Yeah. And this is very interesting. Yeah. That, that, that and, is for me is very important for the students, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you also have written for the human voice. And since I'm a singer, I always want to know how it is for you to write for the human voice. Is it easy? Is it very challenging for you? Do you like to sing yourself? <laughs> I like to sing. I sing a lot. Sometimes I'm I'm ridiculous, but for example, in, a, in a, when I gave my when I give my lesson, sometimes I sing to the student. Sometimes with some noise and but the rhythm, for example, to to I said always to to students, if you're not able to 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 express with your mouth, 
uh, your voice, the rhythm you are writing, it, there is a problem because very often it, it will be impossible to, to play. And so you want that the singer sing suddenly uh, a, a quarter tone here. Uh, and you have a perfect here? No? And or what, no. Do you, what do you expect that the singer had this one? So we must think about uh, this, the situation of the others and how we can do it. And so... Uh, I, know, I I like yes I like to 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 compose for voice. Uh, I had uh, well I don't have a big catalog eh, in my I don't write fast. Uh, I'm so sorry. You know, there is some composer who compose very fast, some of them not. And so um, yes, uh, the voice um, at the beginning it was absolutely a connection with the text. Maybe it is very traditional, right? but I, do, I don't like to do a... Okay, this thing. Uh, okay, I can do it, but uh, it's not so interesting. But if there is some pieces interesting with that. I, I like uh, Aventure, Nouvelles Aventures. I like uh, Sequenza mm. di Berio. And um, there are some uh, scores composed by um, Rappi Argis so would be interesting. Oh, and so yeah. They're Absolutely. Great, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, it was my, my my first project, and after since uh, yes, since I'm I'm thinking about the next piece uh, since two thousand nine, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there is more um, a lot more large spectrum of possibility with with the voices, and so I try to speak with that. And suddenly, for example, all the rhythm they can do because they are six singers. And how they can exchange and like a dialogue with sounds and suddenly with some words very clear and uh, some different kind of expression, for example, so very afraid or laughing and so on. But uh, there is an incredible lot of possibilities with the voices and I like to. And I tell you something, uh, since uh, four or five years, after a long period, the young composer want to compose for voice. Really? Yes. Oh, how nice. Yes, more, more, more. Because uh, there was a moment in France with a lot of uh, quarter tones and uh, the, spect the, the effect of the spectral music. I was not in this style. Uh, they don't compose for voice. And after uh, you have, in period, after the te a long period, 10, 12 uh, years during uh, the composer wanted only to write with extended techniques of playing. So mm -hmm. every sound, but no pitch. And so the voice was more or less uh, not possible inside this, uh, this, this kind of project. And so the voice returned since five years. Uh, they want to, for example, for the last uh, concert they have in Paris in the Conservatoire for the Master Two and for the Diploma. The more and more they wanted to compose a piece for voice. Sometimes it's coming too late, I think, because they need to do some things before. But singing is a normal way, and uh, I'm, we don't must be afraid about a melody, about a voice, about. Uh, it is not because we have different kind of sound that you don't have uh, some sound could be sing, uh, could be sung, could be uh, so. Yeah, I'm also I, excited that you, um, yeah, yeah, the young. Composers uh, start writing for voice yeah. again. That's really yes, great yes, to hear. Yes. And also the point you made that you can kind of sing or produce it yourself. That's also something I often observed with composers that the the ones who can do that in some way. I mean, they don't have to sing like beautifully, but they can do it. Um, somehow, it's also more doable for me and I, I get easier into it and it also helps in in the rehearsals if they can kind of produce it that I can get the character because as you said I mean notation is great but you cannot notate everything <laughs> there are limitations no. yes. and um, so how is teaching for you I mean you have been teaching a lot at the conservatory I'm teaching or since a long time that's a yes. clear question Oh, yeah, I... but how is how how is teaching for you? And, and I mean, you already told us that there are um, developments and changes, and I, I assume you like it. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> so I I like to to give a transmission, and I like uh, analyzed. It was my my first uh, teaching uh, position uh, because I learned composition and the kind of musicology we have in France and. Uh, 
with the focus on the analyze. So that like in the tradition of Messiaen, for example, but more precise uh, with the, the different techniques of writing and tonalities and so on <laughs> that we don't have in French sometimes. Um, Claude Balif was a very good professor, for example, was more inside the, the techniques, uh, very precise. So, and I and I love with Betsy Jolas too, uh, for example. So, um, I like to, to, to give a transmission because in my family first, uh, they, they, they thought that I'm um, crazy to, to compose this bloody music. And a lot of people told me, but what are you doing that? It's not interesting and you don't get a lot of money and you don't blah, 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 blah. And so um, I try to explain sometimes <laughs> what's happened. And I like to, to give this transmission because uh, I need for a moment to, to, to learn a lot of things uh, alone uh, sometimes. When I learn harmony, counterpoint, and on, on fugue, and so on, and analyze in one way, some people doesn't uh, give me really the how the music was made and uh, to, more deeply, and not only uh, oh this one uh, use Messiaen use the mode uh, yes and after uh, I don't know uh, Wagner is a text yes and after it is we cannot stop uh, just on the on a picture on a slogan what 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 he is a composer it is more more deep more complex what is the relationship for example with the text and the voice of, with a lot of music by Bach for example it's a very important uh, with Mozart too you have more or less somewhere uh, an opera which is around uh, uh, the the dramaturgy inside the, the thematic material for example the or the the, the the how we compose for 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 the orchestra so. Uh, and after, um, I thought very early it was a way for me to, to get money, to, to be able to compose too in the same time. <laughs> so I began to teach, uh, uh, more early I began maybe to teach my, my first position. I was 24 in a conservatoire for the children uh, to teach wow. the, the solfège, as we say in France. And after I I, I leave because I, I was in the Villa Medici for two years, and uh, I had the, the, really a chance to be uh, called for uh, at the Concert de Paris. Uh, I was uh, thirty one. Uh, there was a concourse, but uh, I began there in thirty one, and I began to teach analysis for the instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. And after several years, uh, I changed the position. I will. Uh, I was a professor for the analyze in the high level. And after two, three years, I don't teach a lot uh, for this class. And I there was a concourse for the uh, composition professor, and I began to teach compositions in two thousand one. So um, yes, it's I'm teaching. It's only a Conservatoire de Paris uh, since uh, thirty four years. And I will live uh, next year when I will be 66 and uh, I will teach uh, 35 years. It's a long time. <laughs> but um, okay. And I like to, to, to do some master classes to, uh, to speak uh, with the uh, students. And, and I'm, I, well, I think I have a kind of talent for that. I'm sorry to say mm -hmm. that, but. Um, <laughs> but, I, we, but I also I, think when you. When you teach, it's also great because with the young people, you kind of know what's going on or what, what they're interested in. I mean, that can be different. And the other question I have is, where do the students come from? Are they all from France or do they also come from other places outside of France to, to your conservatory? Oh, no. Yes, uh, in Paris, uh, the, the composition, there is a lot of uh, foreigners, a lot of. Uh, because we don't have uh, a lot of position for professor for composition before the Conservatoire de Paris, first thing. And uh, I think in Europe is more or less the same. Huh? We have a lot of uh, students coming from Asia, for example. Sometimes from USA, but not a lot of. Some in Europe want to come. And uh, the changes are of was very for the change the big change was the, when we decided to 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 with the new organization of studying with the bologna uh, system and sometimes the students came for the master degree or sometimes they they had they have one year in erasmus exchange and the 
communication between the conservatory and the country is more bigger. In my time, it was absolutely not the same. I I thought for a moment uh, when I was in Paris, the Conservatoire, I wanted to study in Freiburg mm -hmm. with Klaus Huber. And uh, my professor told me at this time, okay, if you want, you can. Uh, my professor was Ivo Malek. Okay, and told me, okay, you can. But if you do that, you won't come again in France. Oui. We must know. We must know that in this period, all was very absolutely separated. Uh, if you wanted, if you wanted to go in another country, it is not easy to to come back with a diploma from Germany or from other. I don't know. No. You must know that if, uh, in. Um, I must give some lights, maybe. Uh, for a long time, until uh, 95 in Paris, it was impossible to be professor if you wasn't an ancient student of Conservatoire de Paris. Mm -hmm. Absolutely impossible. And it was impossible. We have uh, some person who came from the, uh, not uh, from the Conservatoire, for the jury, for the exam. And if you wasn't alumni, student of the conservatoire, it was forbidden too. It was a very closed uh, on each a lot of countries, a lot, certainly more in France than in other countries. Uh, and so uh, today it's absolutely different. Um, for the instrumentalist, I think that the foreigners are around uh, 18%, 20%, but maybe not more because we have a good school for we prepare for the the application is very difficult in Paris because there is not a lot of place and so uh, that the to to find a place is very difficult and the level is very very high for that because there is a selection uh okay and uh, so but for the composition uh, not a lot of we don't have a lot of i i had uh, uh, for the maybe i think that if i have a list of all the students i had since 2001 the french uh, Composer, maybe are around twenty five percent, but not more, not more. And I had only two French women, mm. only. Well, that is curious, huh? Is it still? And you still have not ah, very yes, many. Uh, yeah, yes. I don't for this year, for example. I don't have a French uh, student. I had two only one. It's a very strange. So there are no women coming to study composition in Paris. Not quasi no. Wow. Well, yes, it's really not a good. It's it's not a good thing. I had the well, German composer, uh, Italian composer, mm -hmm. uh, Asian, Korean, uh, Japanese, uh, but uh, that is very strange. And when they oh. when they study because. In France, the, the conservatoire around in France are some of them are very great, very important. But uh, when they begin to study harmony counterpoint, they immediately they are very, 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 very conservative. They hate because the professor said it's absolutely bad. This music it's for the people who can hear nothing. Uh, blah 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 blah. And so uh, we have one or two women, but they are very conservative in this way. Very very. And mm -hmm. so, sorry, I don't think it's so interesting for me, but uh, okay. it's my, my opinion. But Things the same for the, change, I hope. The same, yes, 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 I hope so. Oh, it will be a big change when we, uh, we will be two professors, we will be uh, retired next year, and one position will be for a woman. Yes. It will be. Cool. I mean, it's there's time. so many things. We, we could talk about because I looked at your website and I, I, there's something about art and you have been writing a lot too. But um, let's move on. I would like to know how does a day look in your life or do you have any kind of time management or how do you get all those things done you're doing, teaching, composing and what else is on your list? It's hard. <laughs> It's hard. It's a hard job. Uh, that's why sometimes I feel me tired. I confess that I will be happy to leave the next year. 
yeah is there a favorite time during the day you would like to compose or it doesn't oh, matter yes. for you yes yes i like to compose but um, it's hard to find the moment i okay. will have a, i will have a premiere uh, in three days but for me this score is uh, only the half of the score and i continue to write on these scores because it's a uh, score difficult to compose uh, but uh, if I teach in the same time, I organize different things uh, in the conservatoire. And um, I have some jobs, uh, not really, not paid, but uh, I'm working in a foundation to help uh, Fondation Salabert to help a young composer for the commission for recordings and, and to help with the publication of books. Super. So it's a, it's a job too. Uh, I am in the organization of the conservatoire uh, to fight with the, the direction of the conservatoire <laughs> uh, for a lot of things and uh, so it's uh, yes it's taking time so I, I, I will be happy to to only compose for for myself I hope for several years I like to but um, when you have a job to do you must do it <laughs> yes certainly and i'm very uh and i need to work for the students too uh, there is a lot of things to do for them not only yeah. in the lesson uh, sometimes uh, you help them you have a lot of lectures you 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 speak to the ensemble blah 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 this uh, this guy this girl are very interesting please uh, you must hear and blah blah and so on I me mean, you more structured and, and very yes. organized okay yeah i need i need to I need to absolutely. There is some moment in which, uh, but here, for example, since um, six, seven weeks, I don't uh, compose and I, I don't have time for different mm. for different reason because um, private reason and uh, blah 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 and uh, so and for the for the conservatoire too because it was uh, the exam uh, and the entrance exam. So I was in the jury and so on to organize uh, the different part of the exam. And so mm -hmm. it's taking time. Okay. One thing important for me to help me is uh, to run. I run. I am a running man. <laughs> every day? I, uh, not every day. No, no. I'm running around. Uh, my program is not until uh, 24 kilometers per, for a week. And very often it is around 30, 40. Cool. And for example, after we, we speak together, I will run for six, eight kilometers, I think. And you walk I, along the Seine? <laughs> uh, no, no, not around the Seine, because I'm not in the center of Paris. It's too expensive. But I'm uh -huh. going to the conservatoire. Uh, I walk. Oh, cool. <laughs> Three kilometers okay. and an half. And so it's I, I need absolutely to do. That's very... Super. I was... Uh, I was uh, an alpinist when I was young too. I like to to climb in the mountain. Oh, <laughs> it's wow! My, fa my favorite place are in the Alps, and in the Alps it is super because you could be uh, in uh, France, yes, but in Italy, in Switzerland, in Germany, uh, in Austria. So I like it, <laughs> but it was oh. I, I was it was important for me. I remember one day with my father. I was uh, young, was 10, 11, something. And he asked me, he told me, uh, do you know where we are now? Uh, I say, yes, uh, we are in the mountain. Uh, yes, but now you're in Switzerland. And it was very interesting for me because I said, oh, we are, we speak about the frontier and so, but it's the same place. It's mm -hmm. the same person. Yes, they don't speak as us sometimes, but it is the same. And for me, the help is a good place for me for that too. Yeah. Well, I imagine. Part. Yeah, I imagine I'm I'm not a climber, but that you really need to be focused or have an empty brain that you know what's going on. I think with running, I mean, I have been jogging too. For me, it's more the I can get empty too in my brain, yes. but I also like yes. with yes. running the those movements that are repeating itself, and and when I do that or driving a car or something. I often get the the best ideas through this monotonous <laughs> yes. movement. <laughs> yes, yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What does success mean for you? To be played. 
what that is important to to meet another musicians uh to to get a little money for that too not a lot of i know i know that i choose a, a job in which we are poor but it was my decision mm -hmm. but we have a, another kind of uh, of things Yes, we are. And on, on the other hand, we're so lucky that we do something yes, yes, we really absolutely. like. Yes, yes, absolutely. That, that's absolutely. that's a quality in life. <laughs> it's a kind, yes, 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 absolutely. And to, to, to have time to do something, it's not only made for the money. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that drives you forward or do you have a vision? What keeps you going every day? To be... Um, to continue to have some kind of progress of evolution that's my best uh, target i want to 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 develop uh, to develop uh, the the way in which i composing for example because i had i have uh, in my life i change a lot my way of hearing music for example i heard absolutely not the same things Yes, I was a very, very fr French guy, uh, made in the Conservatoire de Paris, and blah, 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 blah. And um, I compose uh, most in the French style, I think. Um, the way was, uh, the, the royal way was uh, after Mission, after Boulez, and so suddenly I decided to change my way because some composer... Uh, Ask me, I can say. I remember the it was a, a lot of uh, scores of pieces uh, works play uh, by uh, Luigi Nono, played in eighty seven uh, in Paris Festival d'Automne during the Festival d'Automne, and it was a, a shock for me, for example, very important shock because uh, there was a way a very interesting for me to hear the music and to hear the sounds. To hear the space, um, because I was not uh, completely satisfied with the, the post Boulez way and the and the spectral music too, not all of the spectral music, but uh, yes, and in, with this kind of composer, I discover more deeply a very interesting festival. d'automne was the very moment important for me when I remember. Because we had uh, more the the pieces composed by Holliger, by Lachenmann, uh, some different composer, Robert Platz, and others. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and after other composers, yes, I know that I'm looking a lot in the German way. <laughs> I know that uh, they are very often uh, the composer I like, uh, even if they are not uh, German. For example, Rebecca Sanders, uh, but Tenno Poppe, but uh, different. I, I cannot tell, tell all the names. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be have a problem with my colleagues. But um, I changed my this way of hearing music, and so I develop uh, as I can different uh, to find the good notation to express different kind of sounds. For example, to keep this uh, way that I want absolutely not to to improvise, but to compose and to and the composition in this way of the the suit, the, the what's following the classical music is uh, inside the notation. It is our way to think the music, to 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 give the music to the musician and so on. And so uh, I hope that I can develop this kind of, uh, continue to develop this kind of writing. I hope, I know that I'm 65 now, but uh, I think that the last piece I composed, there is new things. So that's my, I hope to, to, continue to develop and not to use uh, the same things more and more. It is not... Uh, I will be very when I, hear, when I hear you, I also find that more interesting. I mean, I, I'm not a composer, but to, to find other things and see the development. One thing I often hear from composers too, when they, you know, they have studied somewhere with a, with a professor and they have been whatever under the wings of this professor... And then there has to be this point, and they sometimes tell me that for a while they can't kind of try to write in a way how they learned it at whatever the conservatory. And then there is this point where they let go and they just say, I, I, I find myself more and I, and I don't need to 
please the professor or something. And it seems to be a very crucial point for composers, right? So I think that different things, uh, it is a big question. First, you, you, you don't teach as professor, you don't teach the composition. You teach how to think the composition. It's absolutely not the same, huh? first thing. Second thing, it is impossible to, to have a transmission of your own experience. That is, for me, it's very clear. If you uh, say, if you express to, the, you, you told to a student, okay, I do that and you can do the same, you, you cut the wings of this uh, young composer. So it's absolutely stupid. Uh, you can, with your own expression, find what, where are the problems, for example, what in the, for the scores uh, composing by the, the student. But uh, you cannot tell, so I do like that. Rep you can copy that, okay? Absolutely. That's why when I'm teaching, I don't speak a lot about my music. Very, uh, just little thing, because we are in a fake situation if we speak too much, if we are speaking too much about what they are doing. Sometimes we are not the best to speak about what they are, we are doing, first point. And after, the student is more free. If we speak, for example, from another composer, from another scores as an example. And one thing I, I think very important for a professor is to know, yes, his job, or her job, but to be able to hear a lot of different compo other composers, to speak to the students about other composers. And so the discussion is more free, and I think it's better for the evolution of the students. And after the last point, some day uh, someone tell me, uh, tell, ask me, uh, what, what is for you a com teaching composition? I, I say, yes, my project is to be to become more a more a mirror i must disappear and at the end the students must uh, i hope he could or she could see himself or herself mm -hmm. without me and so that's my uh, my aim for when i teach i must disappear that is very important the, because uh, they need to to fly as they want, and sometimes I I'm not comp I don't agree sometimes what uh, they want to do, not completely, but it's not the question. The question is about their own project. Are there is kind of logic, the kind of development they can do, the, the, where they must hear the, the sound they, are, they want to write. And so I'm, I'm there only to, to develop what they want to do. Yes, naturally, sometimes I say, well, you do that. I'm not sure that I don't totally agree, but in your style, if you want to do that, okay. And that's why you must hear or analyze this kind of music, and maybe it could happen that the students say, okay, I would like to go there to study with this person. I say, okay, that's, uh, that's your, your way, and I'm, I don't, uh, you are not my, uh, an object of mine. <laughs> You're a person, and you must be free. That mm -hmm. is important for me. That is my great pleasure. I, I, great pleasure. Pleasure is maybe not the word, but a uh, kind of satisfaction when uh, I saw that I have very different composer coming from my class and say, okay, that's good because uh, I'm not. But there I guess to... if you if you make them really <laughs> feel themselves, then probably the trans transition from conservatory to yes, whatever the yes, professional yes. life is. Yes. It's easier, but I think when I also hear you, I mean, I like how you teach. It's really fascinating, yeah. but I'm not sure at least uh, that some um, German professor have taught that way years ago because there often was a more um, strict style and this is how you have to do it. But it also has changed a lot here as well that they really try to bring out more what is really whatever the language, the personality 
of the young composer and and I think that's that's great that mm. this development is happening yeah um we're actually at the last question and I really enjoyed talking to you and and thank you for all your insights and now we also have an impression what's happening in France and Paris and all your music and we also will put your website into the show notes and people can yes. look at what you do or listen to some of the recordings My last question is, which tip would you like to give young artists? But I'm not a young artist. <laughs> But I your don't... experience, so you know great things that maybe could help a young artist. Or which tip would you have liked being given yourself when you were, I don't know, 20? Or if I was 20, I don't know what's happened, you know, because uh, I remember that when I was 10, 20, I thought my future, but this future didn't happen, happen. For example, when I was 19, I was at uh, 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 the first public concert at IRCAM, Centre Pompidou, with uh, some pieces with uh, instrumentation, instruments and electronics. And so, so that's why absolutely one of my projects, because I, I thought that it was... Uh, More interest. I didn't have a, a, a big uh, feeling, great feeling with uh, music for tapes. I wanted to to do the mix music with the instruments and so. And I really thought that yes, when I will be uh, an artist after the composer after the conservatoire, I will compose a lot of pieces with electronic sounds and instruments. And it didn't happen because. It is not so easy. I was uh, early at IRCAM. I uh, began there, I was 26, I think, 25, 26. But uh, it was not so easy uh, to, to have a commission and uh, to have time because I, I teach uh, very early. Uh, and uh, so I didn't have time to, 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 to work with the computers. There was not a place for a lot of people. And after I composed different pieces, but For example, Yerkam lost the sound of one of my pieces mm. 20 years ago and uh, 25 years ago. And uh, it was a terrible job to redo the disco. It, this, this score yet is, a, is for singer, a soprano ensemble on electronic. And the title is in German, So schnell zu früh. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, a uh, story with these uh, scores, but uh, I must redo this uh, this score, and that's why, for example, it is one reason why my 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 last score is not completely finished for me because uh, I spend uh, four uh, four months in the studio to redo the electronic sounds on two years. So, what could happen? We don't know. I think the way is very 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 difficult for the young composer that's uh i i'm not so happy it is super today it's more hard because um well, in france uh, i think the moment is more conservative and they a lot of people push to go back to the tonality well bref mm. <laughs> okay it's stupid to say that And they want more uh, cool music uh, on which we could have some pictures and blah, 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 of videos and blah, 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 very chic, but sometimes without deep uh, expression. We are not there to, to... I'm not composing music for the people who want to dream during the concert. There is some music for that. I think it's uh, not not always bad, but it's there is some music for that. Other style, not in this project. And so that for the young composer, it is very hard now. And I don't really know what I can um, say about to be young. I, I'm not sure that I wanted to be a young composer today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, that's the the... The problem I have today is that uh, a part of the modernity uh, is pushing away by different person today in the organization. The, they want, for example, the, yes, we maybe we give a commission for an opera, but an opera is in the 
the same uh, orchestra, the same kind of voice, the same, uh, if possible, the story in the but very uh, easy to understand. Blah 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 blah. blah. And so it, there is a period conservative, and so it is hard for that. But the way I think for them, they must find another place because the most uh, important place, yes, are very conservative. I think sometimes that the orchestra could not accept to have an evolution, a normal orchestra. I think that the opera house don't want to change. They, they know, they do very well the job, and the musicians are very great, the singers are great, the administration are great, but we don't move because it is expensive and we need to have a lot of people inside the hall. And so if you want to do something, you must go to find another way for the moment, I think. It is possible because, yes, we have a lot. They are more able than in my generation, able to do the electronic sound with the instruments. So they, are, they, are, they, they found a lot of new qualities they have. And so uh, they are able to do things I'm not able to do. And that's good. They must mm. do their, their own experience. And I think the experience will be for a moment a little underground. Not in the, because uh, the, the classical music is very conservative, the world of the classical music. And there is another trap. The big concert hall we have now, for example, uh, Philharmonie de Paris, uh, Elbe Philharmonie. Okay. You could have uh, 2,500 uh, people inside the hall for a concert. And sometimes I'm afraid because in Paris they, they could play a, a bar cantata, a bar cantata with 2,000 people. It is absolutely impossible to hear the continuo, for example. And if you cut, you cut the, the continuo, you kill a part important of the music. Absolutely. So uh, for that, I think that it is uh, this uh, big concert hall need to have the most famous pieces of the repertoire with large orchestra. And for example, uh, won't be so not so interesting to play Schumann symphony. I, I, I'm in love with Schumann. I, it's one of my favorite composers. And uh, after 1,200, it is, it is impossible, I think, to have a, a good sound, a good relationship with the sound. And sometimes we have concert uh, in Philharmonie de Paris, we have solo, piano solo, recital of piano. But it's completely crazy. So, and this kind of uh, place are very ex expensive. When you open the door without musician, it is something around, uh, I think, for an evening. I don't remember exactly the price, but it was absolutely crazy. It is something like uh, 10 or 20,000 uh, uh, euros only to open the doors with no one inside. And so it's, um, it's a trap because you need to have some people. If you want to have some people, you must play the most famous pieces with the most famous artist. But you repeat, you repeat, you repeat, and there is less and less young people. Because, oh yes, it is always with the same style, they are the same clauses, the same program, uh, blah, 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 blah. And there is less young person who came in, the, in this kind of concert. So I think that for the young, the way is to, to find a maybe more underground way and something new will happen, naturally. Mm -hmm. I thank you very much, Frederick, for this nice talk today. Thank you, too. Thank you. And so, bye-bye. See you later. This was the interview from today. I hope that it inspired you. And please send me your emails, send me your feedback, because I love to interact with you. Thank you very much that you tuned in with me today. I really, really hope that you liked it. And... Please tell your friends and colleagues about this podcast. I thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Live your music, live your life and see you next time. Yours, Irene. <laughs>